Hey guys, for today's class, we will learn a pitch class set inversion. And before we go on further, this might be a little bit of a tricky topic, so let's make sure that we're all on the same page. Before we go on, let's just figure out what this each uh, word means. Inversion is, like you see, something that is like an inver uh, inverted over some kind of axis, right? So this is an inversion of the shape over the mirror, right? So this is an example of inversion. Set uh, in in the in this type of music theory, set just means a group of things, right? When you say, yeah, pitch class set, that means a group of pitch classes. And pitch class is a way to look at a way to abstract a pitch so that we don't consider octave equivalence or we consider octave equivalence it's not just equivalent they're the same so instead of calling one note uh c let's say c4 and c5 we don't differentiate these two we're just canceling this out and they're both c okay so pitch class and inversion is inversion of pitch class group of pitch classes all right, before we go on, let's, uh, to contrast the two concepts, let's take a look at pitch space and pitch class space. In our everyday uh, talking about music, we use both concepts. We just didn't uh, pay attention to the underlying spaces, but this is underlying spaces when you're talking about any kind of notes or any kind of notes in the music. So when you say pitch space, it is a space that is represented by, the most often by this uh, staff paper like this. And in theory, infinitely high and low pitches are possible. So you can have this note D here, this note D here. These notes are represented as occupying a different location on the space. So we are kind of considering them as different things. In contrast, pitch class space is kind of closing this infinitely extending line into a circle. So that whatever you do, you're just circling, you know, this way or that way. Yeah. So you there's no infinitely many things. You're just place you're being placed in somewhere in this circular area so when you say uh c major triad for example uh when you say c major triad we are basically meaning that a group of three notes that makes up a c major triad c e and g and we don't really consider in what voicing does it take so in that case, we're thinking in terms of the pitch class space, right? But if you're looking at the music and looking at the harmony written for, let's say, a choir, and you heard a specific arrangement of these three notes, say something like, uh, something like this, right? C, E, N, G. Then you, this is we're talking in the in more physically available pitch space. Okay, so pitch class space is an operation that happens in the circle, circular arrangement of pitches like this. And let's uh, first listen to one example of pitch class set inversion. Uh, this is an example by Arnold Schoenberg, a famous composer of this style, uh, inventor of this style of music. Uh, hugely influential. Let's listen to this passage first. This is his fourth string quartet. Yeah, 
It's a very catchy melody. Let's uh, look at just the first four notes of primary melody. Here we have we have D, C sharp, A, and B flat. D, C sharp, A, and B flat. And let's take a look at another primary me melody in the sec play by second violin. G, A flat, C, and B natural. G, A flat, C, and B natural. Let's just take a look at those four notes and see what kind of relationship can we figure out. Uh, <clears throat> There are many relationships. Actually, there's only one relationship you can do. Uh, let's see the interval between each pitch classes. So two to one, to, for you to go from two to one in the pitch class space, you go minus one, right? To go from one to nine, we go plus eight. And to go from nine to 10, we go up one right so two minus one is one one plus eight is nine nine plus one is ten right so this is the uh, inter organization internal organization of its pitch classes oh where did it go hmm. yeah here there you go minus one plus eight plus one and let's take a look at this one. From eight to nine, seven to eight, we go plus one. From eight to zero, we go minus eight. From one to 11, we go minus one. Do you see the pattern? We have same size of intervals, but for the, the plus and minuses are uh, switched, right? So it's a plus, this is minus, this is plus, this is plus, this is minus, this is plus, and this is minus, right? So this is a result, these two pitch class that are related by, basically related by a inversion. Okay, if we plot this on the clock face, it'll look something like this. I'll make a big one here so that we can get both of them. Mm. We have two, one, two and nine, ten. Okay, and let's put the other one in a different color. Let's use uh, this color. We have seven, a, zero, oh, zero, and eleven. Does it look like uh, inversion? It actually looks like a transposition too, but let's, let's uh, take it as inversion first. So if you think about this, we have 7, 8, 11, 0. If we kind of take this as an axis of inversion, oh, no, not this. If we take this line as the axis of inversion. You can see that seven inverts to two, eight inverts to one, nine, uh, actually zero inverts to nine, 11 inverts to 10, right? Do you see this relationship? So seven, eight, zero, one inverse like this. Good. And what's interesting in the pitch class and inversion is that all these corresponding notes, so 7 and 2, 8 and 1, 9 and 0, 10 to 11, they all add up to the same number, right? Add up to the same number, which is in this case nine. Okay, and this number is called the index number. Index number. So let's go back to these notes. 
So 2 plus 7 is eight, 9, right? 1 plus 8, 1 plus 8 is 9. 9 plus 0 is 9. 10 plus 11 is 9. And this is common. This is not common. This is a requirement for all the pitch cluster inversion, that you will always end up with the same uh, num same um, sum between the two corresponding pitch clusters. And that is called the index number. It doesn't have to be 9 all the time, but uh, it can be all 12 uh, of these nodes. But for now, this is an example of a pitch cluster inversion. Let's go back and see how we can construct a pitch cluster inversion. So uh, there are two ways. There, there are actually many ways, but there are two ways that I want to share. One is the clock method, and the other is interval internal interval method. So uh, <clears throat> let's first look at this clock method. Say we have a pitch class set, uh, let's say 0 to uh, 5, yeah, 0 to 3. And this is our pitch class set, 0, 2, and 3. And we want to invert this, let's say, around Let's just pick an axis. Let's just invert around this uh, this axis right here. Then zero will be inverted back to itself. Okay. Zero will be zero. Two will be inverted to this node, which is ten, and three will be inverted to nine. Right, nine. So this is the inversion of 0, 2, 3. And uh, what do you think is the in index number? Index number is the, again, addition of the two corresponding pitch clusters. So 0 plus 0 is 0. 2 plus 10 is 12, which is 0. 3 plus 9 is 12, also equals 0. So the index number is 0. Okay, so how do we represent it or how do you write it on the score or, or, or on the paper? We write it like this. We do T0, T is, uh, just write it for now, T0, uh, which means it didn't, it has been, hasn't been transposed. And T0, I refers to inversion. T0, I of 0 to 3 is equals to nine ten zero. So this is how this is how you write this inversion of relationship of this pitch class set. And you might wonder why why did I put 9, 10, 0 instead of 0, 10, 9? It's because, what do you think? Because this is the normal form. This is a normal form of this. So you normalize this arrangement to end up with this. Okay. So this is one way to do it, the clock method. Let's do another method, which I think is also helpful, <clears throat> is uh, to go by inter internal intervals. So let's use the same note, same uh, pitch class set, 0, 2, 3. And let's think about the intervals between this. We have plus 2, uh, uh, yeah, plus 2, and plus 1, right? So plus 2 and plus 1. Now we need to do is to figure it out so that we do minus 2 minus 1, right? Or you can also do plus 1 plus 2. It doesn't matter because they, they mean the same thing. So you can look at 
zero. Uh, let's see, how does it work? You can look at zero like this. Uh, zero, 10, nine, like this. Uh, in that case, actually, we would, we, we would need to know the index number. So when you say t is zero i of two to three, what is the answer for this? Then you will need to figure out uh, in this way. Uh, so zero. So we will need something that adds up to zero. So it will still be nine. And then now we know plus two and plus one. So now we do plus one and plus two. 10 and 0. Yeah. Either way, you can choose either way to do it. Uh, the textbook explains another method that's called the rainbow method, which is similar to this. But this is how you write <clears throat> the inversion, and this is how you do the inversion. Okay, so having uh, done this, let's do a little bit of exercise uh, by looking at the textbook. So let's take a look at this one. Uh, yeah, there are some examples here. Try it. So for each pitch class set below, it says, write the inversion around 0, 06 axis by substituting for each pitch class set in this inverse. So basically it means T0i of all these notes. Uh, let's take a look. Let's do just a couple of these. Mm -hmm. Let's do a couple of these. Uh, find this part here. So let's do let's do one let's do this one with the clock method. So on the clock, put nine ten two three nine ten two three, right? And then they say invert around the zero six axis, which means invert so that the index number is addition of two corresponding notes. In this case, actually, what happens is that the corresponding notes are the other uh, themselves, right? So 9, 10, 2, 3. 9 plus 3 is, uh, let's do it this way. 9 plus 3 is 12, which is 0. 10 plus 2 is 12, which is 0. Right, so the index number is zero, and the answer is hmm, what do you think? The answer is nine, ten, two, three, because this is the normal form. Yeah. Let's do another one actually. Let's do another one on the clock face version. Uh <clears throat> clock face method. Let's do 11 to 5. Uh, let's see if I can do this. Okay. 11 to 5. Mm -hmm. All right. This one. 11, 2, and 5. And then again, we need to invert around this axis. So 11 will become what? So 11 to 5. 11 will become 1. Okay. 2 will become 10. 5 will become 7. Oh, 7. Okay, and this is not the end. We need to rearrange it so that it becomes a normal form. So normal form will be seven, 10, 11. 
7, 10, 11. Is it 9, 10, 2, 2? Yeah, okay. Let's do one more, but this time using the, the interval structure method. So let's do this one. We have 3, 6, 8, 9. And then we need to do T0i of it. So index number is 0. So the answer is, let's first need to figure out the interval. Plus 3, plus 2, plus 1. All right. Now we need to figure out the first node. And then 2 plus 1 plus 2 and plus 3 because we're inverting the uh, order okay so index number 0 which means you need to add something at this node so that it equals to 12 so this will be 3 right 3 plus 9 equals 12 okay so we've got the first node and then the second node is plus 1 will be 4 plus 2 will be 6 and plus 3 be nine, three, four, six, nine will be the answer. Three, four, six, nine. And because this is the most compact version that is presented here, we don't need to worry about the normal form. This will be the answer. Okay, so let's get these three notes and see if we got up the if the answer is correct. So show the answers. <clears throat> okay, we have Three, four, six, nine. Uh, it came out in the reverse order, but that's fine. Nine, ten, two, three. Nine, ten, two, three. And ten. Oh, this must be. Yeah, it should be one. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So that's that. Okay. So that is how you do an inversion. Okay. For. Wednesday by midnight, I want you to do workbook 36.4. And this one deals with both transposition and inversion of pitch class set. Uh, and it's, it's kind of uh, presented in kind of a confusing way. So let's figure out uh, just one or two. Let me do one or two for you, and then we can figure it out together. So we need to first turn whatever is bracketed here into pitch class into uh, integer notation so we have e6 uh, 4 6 8 10 11 and here we have 9 11 1 this is 3 and this is 4 9 1 9 11 1 3 4 and we need to see how these two are related how are these related? In order to figure out, you need to look at the internal interval structure. So we have 2, 2, 2, and 1, right? 4 to 6 plus 2, 6 to 8 plus 2, 8 to 10 plus 2, 10 to 11, 1. Let's take a look at this. 2, 2, 2, one. So the or, uh, intervals between the pitch classes are the same. The order of interval is 2, 2, 2, 1 in both cases. So it must be the transposition, right? So how, now what kind of transposition should we do to get us from this note to that note? It's, uh, it's up 5, right? It's a plus 5. Uh, yeah. So this is T5 of A, All right? T5 to A, then you will get the B. That's how you do it. Okay, let's do one more. Uh, let's say, mm, let's say this. D, E, F sharp, G sharp, and A. This is 2, 4, 6, 
6, 8, and 9. Again, we have a 2, 2, 2, 1 situation here, right? So this will be, <clears throat> this will be a, another transposition, not the inversion, uh, and another T5 of B. Yeah. Good. If you actually encounter a pitch class set that has a reverse order, let's say we have, for example, we have 0, 1, 3, 5, 7 as a pitch class set, then we'll have 1, 2, 2, 2, like this. Then this will be an inversion, right? And if this is an inversion, then we can figure out that <clears throat> uh, 0 plus 9 is 9, 8 plus 1 is 9, 9, 9, and 9. So the index number is 9. So it'll be T9i of 2, 4, 6, 8, 9 equals to 0, 1, 3, 5, 7. Something like this. In the hypothetical situation, no, it doesn't happen here. Okay. Uh, let me do one more and then I'll stop the video. Let's take a look at Stravinsky example. Uh, I have a recording available here. here is happening. Something like this. Uh, I don't think it was exact, but it's the same piece. All right. Anyway, let's do F and G. So let's figure out the inter, uh, integers for the F. This is 0, 7, auto class of C, L, F, D flat. D flat is 1. And A is 9. Okay. So we have, let's put it in normal form. Uh, 7, 9, 0, 1. Let's take a look at segment G. We have 2, 9, 0, 8. 2908. So it'll be 8902. So these are the two pitch class sets. Let's take a look at this. Interval is 2, is 3, and 1. And how about this? 1, 3, and 2. You see the order is the order is reversed. There's 2, 3, 1, and 2, 3, 1 this way. So this is related by an inversion. And how do you find out the index number? The index number is figured out by looking at the corresponding notes. So 1 with 8, right? These are corresponding notes. 0, uh, and 0 to, what was going on? Uh, 0 to 9, another corresponding note. 9 to 0, another one. And 2 to 7, another one, and they all equals to what? 9, right? So 9 is our index number. So we can say G is T9I of F. Okay, that's it. So do for the assignment, do 36.4 A, B, and C. We did a, partial, a portion of it. And the answer, the enter, uh, enter the answers on the blackboard. I'll have a blanks available for you. Okay, I hope this was helpful and I will uh, see you on Wednesday. I, I will make myself available during our class time for any question. So I will see you on Wednesday if you have any question. Also, feel free to email me if you have any other question too. Okay, bye-bye.